Hey guys, this is a tutorial to show you how to create an awesome camouflage pattern with just the supplies found at your local hardware store. So we're just going to dive right in here. I'm creating a base coat on this gun. It's going to create the pattern effect on the inside of the tiger stripes and we'll see that kind of develop a little later on in the video. And just remember guys, you can use this technique to create any kind of color scheme you like. So once we now have the base coat put down on both sides, I'm going to use this metal sheet to create my pattern. With the darker color on top, this allows the lighter color to really show through. It's going to have a crisscross pattern on the inside of my tiger stripes. Now, you don't have to use any materials if you don't want, but if you do, whatever kind of suits your pattern, you can use bits of leaves, you can use twigs, you know, branches, whatever you want to get the desired effect. And now you can see we're getting this kind of textured effect. So once we're done on that side, let it dry 30 minutes or so, dry to the touch, and we can move on to the next side. And once we've done with that, we can move on to the next step. So as you can now see, we've got a nice variety of colors and a really nice subtle textured effect too. And now we move on to my favorite part. So we need some electrical tape. We need a sharp blade and we need a cutting surface and this is the part where we get to create our tiger stripes. So guys, as you can see, this is an extremely easy thing to do. There's no real technique involved, just need to cut some random edges and shapes. So you really don't need to be an expert at this. If you do have a specific design in mind, this is extremely easy to work with. So have no problems cutting out the shapes you want. So just continue to lay out your tape and cut the patterns you want. Just be very patient with this part. It will take a little while just to get it right. I did spend a few hours on this part myself. I just wanted to make it 100% to my taste. Just remember to add a little bit of variety at this point. You don't want to make every single stripe the same, otherwise you do run the risk of making the design a little bit boring. Once we have finished creating all our patterns, we want to go over them again and just create some finer detailing around the edges. And once we've done that, you'll end up with a nice pattern that looks a little bit like this. Now this is where the process really starts to look like it's paying off. So we can now take these stripes and apply them to our gun and we'll really start to see it taking shape. Now don't be afraid to play around with it a little until the patterns and placement are just to your liking. Now that we have our stripes applied to the gun nicely, it's time to apply the primary color. Now this is where our gun starts to lose a little bit of its appeal. The cool factor kind of wears off, but don't worry, it will pay off. Just be mindful in this stage that we want to cover this gun completely in our primary color. It is the primary color and we want to make it look nice and crisp. Now 
So after the recommended 30 minutes to dry, we go to the other side now as well. After I finished the primary color, I let it dry for 24 hours. This is just so I didn't have any problems when moving on to the final stage. It may not have caused any issues if I didn't leave it for that long, but that's just how I decided to do it. So this final stage is optional. If you stuck on your patterns really well, you should have an amazing looking sharp edge on your patterns, which would look great on its own, but I'm going to give them a fade effect around those edges, which just makes it stand out from the crowd in my opinion. Now you will need an airbrush or some way of spraying a small amount of paint in a very small area. Even with the airbrush, this part can be pretty tricky. So the trick here is to hold the airbrush at a 60 degree angle and spray from the edge of the tape outwards. That just gives it that nice faded effect while still keeping a nice solid edge around the pattern. Thankfully, the paint here dries incredibly quickly with the airbrush because it's such a thin layer of paint. This means it won't be long before we can remove our tape and get a nice good look at our end result. This part was not a quick process. It did require a lot of going back over each pattern again just to get that nice even fade. So if you are interested in doing this, just remember to be patient and meticulous with your painting. And now for the most satisfying part of this whole process, we finally get to see our hard work pay off. So one thing to note is to just be careful when removing the tape in case you damage your fresh paint. If you do need to use a knife to maybe lift a corner, just be patient, don't rush it or you will regret it. Another thing to note guys is that you will need to seal this paint job with some clear coat. Now I used three coats personally, but I did find that after a single skirmish game, you know, my mesh mask did wear off some of the paint around the stock. Other than that, the paint job held up extremely well and it was taking quite a beating in a forestry environment. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I do hope it helps you get an idea of just how easy it is to create your own custom paint job. If you have any questions or if you feel I've missed any important details out in this video, just leave a comment on the video and I'll happily respond. But in the meantime, take care and happy shooting.